Hello, everybody, and welcome to the patch rundown for the 1.0 full release update for Risk of Rain 2. Now, first things first, I am dead. I just finished like an eight hour stream. It was super poggers. You should have been there. Which that to be such really gaming, by the way. So my apologies if there's not as much energy as you. Anyway, here's the patch rundown. I figured I would play the patch first. As I said, I put like eight hours of it already and then do the rundown so I can better explain what's going on. So aside from all the intro stuff here, let's just get into the actual content. Um, yes, there is a now a proper ending with credits and all that stuff for the game instead of just infinitely looping there's a server browser function for multiplayer the new survivor is the captain which i'll have more videos on in a bit final stage is the moon four new music tracks captain skin all this stuff let's get to the actual changes here here we go the first thing is there's new interactable called the scrapper so this is on the stage like a shrine a chest a 3d printer etc you can find these randomly on any stage and essentially what the scrapper does is you can trade any of your items and you can choose which item you trade to the scrapper and then when you find a 3d printer it prioritizes all of the scrap in your inventory before it will take any of your actual items so essentially with this if you have any shield gens monster teeth med kits fresh meat you know the less than desirable items you can get them out of your inventory via the scrapper get that scrap and then print them at like a crit printer go to printer etc and not risk losing your actually good items now it's worth noting that the scrapper takes all of your items you cannot if you have like five shield gens and you want to keep like one or two you can't do that if you choose to print an item it takes every single item that you have so keep that in mind when you use this also the scrap that it poops out is tiered so white items will give white scrap green items give green etc and this is what that's saying right here white green red yellow scrap first new item is the molten perforator this is a chance on hit to fire out magma balls they kind of come out like the magma worm balls where they go all up in the air and then they start raining down in a little bit of an arc um it's a chance on hit to do this it's pretty good um it's a lot better on the bigger and stationary targets like parents elder lemurians the alloy worship unit all those big targets this is really good and so i forgot to mention this is a boss item drops from the magma worm the shatter spleen is also a boss item drops from the imp overlord and this one every crit that you make is guaranteed to proc a bleed and that bleed is separate from the tri-tip dagger on top of that when you kill a bleeding enemy they explode and deal damage i believe this damage is based off of their maximum health i do not know this for sure though the mired urn is also a boss item drops from the clay dune strider and it essentially gives you the big suck of the dune strider however at a very lesser rate but on top of that you also apply the tarred debuff to the enemy which the tarred debuff is when the clay templar slows you or where the clay dune strider hits you with the balls and you get slowed that is the tar debuff all it does is slow you by a pretty significant amount so it'll be slowing targets and healing off of them that's pretty good the defiant gouge is a lunar item that when you interact with any shrine in the game so combat shrine mountain shrine shrine of chance shrine of order blood shrine it does not matter it essentially spawns a combat shrine fight for you now this is ridiculously powerful you can get this thing early on you interact with any shrine you get free money essentially assuming of course you can kill the monsters that pop out it is a very strong item i love this thing the mercurial rachis i don't know if it's rachis rackies i don't know it's also a lunar item and this one releases a little aoe periodically that anything inside of the area does additional damage this includes you your allies and the enemy so it's kind of like the effigy of grief but only a positive benefit it doesn't decrease your stats at all but it applies it to the enemy as well so they will also get increased damage you have no control over where this little guy goes if you stand in the area you get the damage and also i believe the buff lingers for about two seconds or so so if you're inside the zone and you exit you'll have the buff for like two additional seconds the last lunar item is purity and i actually have haven't got this item yet i don't know what it does sorry the supermassive leech is a new equipment that you heal for 20 percent of your damage for the next eight seconds this is not damage over time this is a straight up 20 percent of your damage you get as health it is very very good the gorag's opus i also haven't gotten yet so i can't tell you what it does and finally the forgive me please is an equipment that procs your on kill effects repeatedly until the duration is done i think it's like an eight second duration or so now one thing to note here is if you have the soulbound catalyst do not grab this equipment and i repeat do not you will not be able to progress the game it will lag you like crazy do not pick this thing up with the soulbound catalyst you have been warned but for its actual effect it's actually very strong it'll proc your will of the wisps the gasolines the ceremonial daggers it is very very powerful and because it procs all of your on kill effects this means if you have an infusion you can get hp just by throwing this out you don't have to hit a target at all you just toss this guy out with an infusion bam you start getting the hp off of the infusion you can also just get random lunar coins because apparently it counts as you killing something even if you hit nothing it'll give you a lunar coin it's really weird uh, so there's some cool interactions here with that the new character challenge are just the uh, the captain stuff there's two two abilities here and then the skin and then some other challenges as well new lore entries blah 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 here are the gameplay changes starting here with the bleeds this is a massive one so your bleeds can infinitely stack now as long as you keep reapplying a bleed before the duration of the current stack runs out it will add another stack and refresh 
all of their durations. And I missed this on my stream when I originally read the patch notes. The difficulty rate over time for all difficulties has been increased by 10%. And this is a very noticeable change. It got, it took me a little bit of time to get used to it. I'd say about halfway through, like four hours in, I finally got used to it. And you can see here in this update, we buffed a ton of items and also given players way more agency over the run progresses. Our goal is for those more engaged with the game. What we don't want the game to be suddenly much easier is a bit of sanity checks and should not dramatically change the difficulty. It did not dramatically change it. I think I noticed this change the most when I got to stage four and stage five and there were a ton of enemies that spawn. I mean, a ton. Which, I mean, hey, that's a good thing. It's an action-related game, so I want more action. And another thing, they slightly reworked one-shot protection. Number one, your one-shot protection threshold is now displayed on your health. There are these little diagonal slashes to indicate where your threshold is. Now has a lingering duration, so this is for, like, lesser wisp shots or greater wisp when you get hit by two shots. This is pretty good. And this is a bad part. is now subtracted via the curse. So a curse of 10% will remove your one-shot protection entirely. Now, currently, there's only two ways to get the cursed debuff, as far as I know. Number one is shaped glass. Number two is the spinal tonic. And yes, this means that the shape glass which gives you a 50 percent curse for the first stack and it just increases after that completely removes your one shot protection so now the shape glass is essentially the same as the glass artifact you pick up a single shape glass your one shot protection is gone so overall this is a pretty big nerf to one shot protection if you are the kind of person to stack shape glass otherwise it's not that much of a deal in fact it's a little better because you get the lingering duration and it's better for multiple rapid hits like lesser wisps now talking about that 10 percent increased difficulty we have some nerfs to the elite monsters so the regular elites the tier one elites have had their health reduced by 70 percent that's not bad pretty good decrease and then the malachite and celestine the tier two elites have got a whopping 550 percent reduction to their health that is basically a quarter of their hp gone and the reasoning is they had a lot of feedback felt a bit bloated and subsequently the old guillotine felt required fair enough for survivor changes now all of your mobility skills will automatically count as if you are sprinting so even if you're not holding down the sprint key or you didn't toggle the sprint if you use a mobility related skill you are automatically counted as sprinting and on top of that when you exit the skill you will continue sprinting so no longer if you're a mercenary man you have to press your sprint key after every single shift this is a huge change also for melee survivors the melee skills perform more consistently at high attack speeds i've not played a ton of melee on this patch so i don't really know what this change does exactly uh also this is a pretty big change the hit pause duration is increased with attack speed before the patch if you played loader you know when you dash through enemies and it kind of like uh, 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 like staggers you through them that's the hit pause i know what this is saying is that for other melee survivors the hit pause scales with your attack speed because it just felt a little sluggish if you had it. and also a little bit more sticking power with more attack speed so saw blade multi loader auto attacks etc this just helps you out a tiny bit also the keyword system this is just for updating the ui for survivors effects just to make it easier to read multi i have not played multi yet but his buffs actually look very good on paper and from what my chat told me on stream these are actually pretty solid changes so first of all his overall all acceleration was increased by five i believe just just how fast you get to your sprint duration something like that i don't actually know what it means the rebar puncher now charges after you fire it rather than before so when you shoot it instantaneously comes out then the slight charging duration happens so it's more like a cooldown the scrap launcher is now a rocket instead of a grenade so it just travels super straight super fast uh, you can fly through the air a little longer one extra second the explosion radius is larger and the velocity is greater the nail gun no longer files those initial six shots but now has a final shot of 12 nails now fires more consistently has higher proximity coefficient higher damage and it takes one about one second for it to fully deplete the attack speed meaning if you have to reposition just for a millisecond you have to fully wind your attack speed back up this is a very promising change again i have not actually played them yet but on paper these changes sound really nice and on top of it his special just to switch weapons happens even faster and the cooldown on his shift was decreased so overall these are some pretty massive buffs for our boy multi and we all know he needed it next up on mercenary essentially with these changes they always intended him to be more difficult than he currently is so his base health health was reduced and the scaling was reduced as well he no longer has additional health regen but he has a new passive called exposed which when you hit an enemy that is exposed all of your cooldowns go down by one second and whatever attack you struck with gets an additional 350 percent damage his auto attack third strike was nerfed this is just brought in line to his regular attack his regular attack already deals 130 percent damage so this is just the same as that but now it applies the exposed debuff and this is actually another pretty big nerfer the second and third hit of the combo can no longer be started in the middle of other attacks this is actually a really big change because before you could just hold down your left click and use your shift use your m2 use everything and still get those next stacks for the cycle now you can't do that any mercenary mains you know exactly what i'm saying here that's a pretty big nerf uh whirlwind the ground speed multiplier essentially if you use this for ground traversal like horizontally not vertically you're just gonna move faster now his blinding assault got nerfed a little bit as one second extra cooldown but now it could be canceled mid attack by both your m2 and your r which i guess is kind of good because if you dash in and you want to stop right on top of the target instead of go through it you can now do that you get a little more pinpoint accuracy and now the alternate special the uh 
uh, slicing winds, the ranged ability applies exposed on the last hit. And melee accurate is getting some love here. He has a new buff called regenerate, which is 10% of your HP over 0.5 seconds. The third hit of his auto attack gives you this buff and his alternate secondary also gives you the buff. So melee accurate, pretty nice changes. And now his leap apparently wasn't stunning correctly. And now it is. Now with the artificer changes here, her alternate primary attack has a little bit more radius to it. That's a 50% increase. It's not bad, but honestly, I think it needs a little more love than that. I'm probably not going to take this over flame at any point, but the nano bomb got some really nice changes. Now it has slight gravity. I think just means it goes down now. It doesn't travel on a straight line. The blast radius was given a 40% increase. The maximum damage is going up by a butt ton from 1200 to 2000%. The blast force is going up, meaning when you hit smaller enemies like lesser wits, it'll catapult them across and jellyfish as well. The lifetime was doubled. So you can fire this thing all the way across the map basically. And it gets some improved effects. This is a really nice change to nano bomb. And I probably will start taking this over the spear. The reason I took the spear before is because when you freeze something, you get that execute threshold, just like your ice wall. So the spear was a little more DPS than the bomb, but now it looks like the bomb is just way more damage overall. We'll have to see though. And then for any uh, flying mains, you now don't have the damage fall off, but if you're taking ion surge, you're not using it for damage. So I don't know if that's particularly good. Moving on to the item changes now. The monster tooth heals a flat eight HP, but also heals for 2% of your max health. And now this is the stacking benefit, not the flat amount. So essentially this will scale with you as you level up through the run. Pretty good. Same thing with the medkit here. It is no longer receiving a stacking flat amount and it was reduced a little bit to 20 but now it heals for 5% of your max health and an additional five per stack. Other uh, potion armor plate properly reduces damage from environmental effects. So I'm just guessing that the exploded clay pots and the little red beacon things on Rally Point Delta, those weren't being reduced. Now they are. You now get a war banner whenever you activate the teleporter. That's pretty cool. And the visual effects are a little less distracting. The death mark finally receives a stacking benefit. If you didn't know before this patch, it had absolutely zero benefit of being stacked. There was no scaling. And now the debuff duration is just getting an additional seven seconds per stack. The the old guillotine get nerfed quite a bit. This is a very noticeable change. I stacked quite a few guillotines here. You can definitely notice from 20% down to 30 percent per stack but keep in mind that they reduce the hp of the elite monsters already so overall i think elite fights will be about the same all right the runald and kiaro ban changes these are actually kind of huge so first of all the proc chance is no longer variable it is a 100 chance but the way you trigger it is by dealing 400 or greater damage on one attack now what this value means is that if you're using like your auto attack on commando which i think deals 90 percent damage per shot it might be 100 i don't remember but it's below 400 you're not going to proc the bans even if you deal a critical strike because you're still under that threshold but if you have something like his m2 and that critically strikes that would be enough damage to do it because that's over 400 in other words if you use a high damaging equipment like a royal capacitor or a prion you are guaranteed to proc these bands as long as they're not on their 10 second cooldown so guaranteed proc on both bands but you can only proc them every 10 seconds which this duration is not reduced by alien head or fuel cells it's not an equipment and it's not an ability and also that attack has to deal 400 or more damage also the numerical values were adjusted a little bit on both bands so the ice band now has the same base but now scales 250 per stack which is a awesome change because before it was only 125 they literally doubled the scaling effect and on top of that you get the increased duration on the slow ice band is really powerful now and the kiaro's band was nerfed a little bit so from 500 to 300 base but now buffed the scaling amount a little bit so if you can get like 10 bands it's doing more overall damage but the aoe was increased drastically it's now a massive sprawling fire tornado it's really cool um and this tornado does not move so overall i think this makes the fire band more consistent because before to deal this full damage amount you would have to have the fire band the tiny little fire band stay on top of that target which wasn't really plausible unless you're fighting a massive target like an elder Lemurian or the aldo worship unit etc now the area is much bigger and it's more consistent damage so i like these changes to both bands a lot and let me just say this the difference that having one or both of these bands makes is so big in your runs. I noticed a massive difference in my overall damage as soon as I picked up one or two of these bands. I'm going to do more testing, obviously. This is only the first day of the update, but man, they feel really strong. The head stomper I didn't actually get today, but the damage has been buffed to all the way up to 10 thousand percent damage at maximum speed, which is a crap ton. And the explosion radius is five meters up to 100 meter area of effect. That is a gargantuan area. I can't even explain that. I'm actually really looking forward to getting this item and testing it. The Interstellar Deathmount got some much needed buffs here. The area went from three meter base 
and 1.5 scaling to five meters for both of those values. That's really good. Also, the tick duration was doubled from every one second to every half second. Okay, Chrysalis now grants true flight and anti-gravity instead of just jump to hover. I have not got this equipment either, but I feel like this is gonna be a pretty good change. And if you press your jump button, you now get a short dash in the direction of the movement with a short cooldown. That's really good. Strides of Heresy no longer puts you in combat. I didn't pick it up, so I don't really know what this is supposed to mean. The Hailfire Tincture got a 50% buff to both the radius and the duration. Pretty good. The Effigy of Grief is now placed where you're aiming rather than the Effigy of Grief got a little bit of a rework. Number one, you can now throw it to where you want to go, which is a massive change instead of just putting it beneath you and debuffing yourself. It's no longer consumed and you can have up to five areas on the map. I've not tried this equipment yet. As with the other stuff, I haven't tried it yet, but this sounds really cool. The default trigger of the Little Disciple was increased by quite a bit, but it has increased damage and the fire rate now scales with your movement speed. So the faster you're moving, the more it fires. For some more broad changes, number one, 3D printers now appear more often and cost less to spawn for the director. And essentially these two changes together mean you're seeing a ton, like a butt ton of 3D printers. Uh, the scrapper can also appear, obviously. Titanic Flange is now more depressing. Feels bad, man. For Sky Meadows, they added the teleporter to lead to the final stage. If you don't want any spoilers, don't worry, I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. Otherwise my video of the final boss should be up by now. You can go watch that to see what this means. There's another big change here. Your blue portals are now more common from 25% for the first random one to 37.5%. Keep in mind that this percent is halved every time you see a blue portal period. So it doesn't matter if it's a random blue portal or a purchased one. This percentage is cut in half every time you get a blue portal. So keep that in mind. And the Bizarre Between Time gets five Lunar Buds instead of four. For some monster changes, the HP of the Mushrooms was nerfed. The parents were nerfed. The sound of Lesser Wiss attacking no longer happens if they're stunned. The Imp Overlord can no longer blink like a ridiculous amount. And their bleed is now staggered instead of just all in a straight cone, which is pretty good. And the Magworm can no longer travel ridiculous distances. And all also is considerably more aggressive. They are not kidding about this line. The Magwarns will hunt you down. I got quite a few Magwarn fights and holy moly, these guys are insane. The Void Reaver, I honestly didn't really notice these changes. They still felt like the regular Void Reavers to me. And they finally added a spawn effect and the animation to the Bison. It's been a long time coming. Other than that, there's just a bunch of quality of life changes and bug fixes, not too many important things. That is the 1.0 patch for Risk of Rain 2. Let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite change for the update? You can check my stream out at twitch.tv slash Also join on Discord if you want to. Oh, no, bye-bye, buddy. Thanks for watching.